What's going on, everybody? This is Lag on Lock here, and welcome to the Ball State Cardinals Dynasty here on NCAA 10 for the PSP. For some of you that don't know, Ball State is located in Mun Muncie, Indiana. Um, before starting, I had no idea where Ball State was, so you know, I did a little bit of research on that. But anyway, we're in the Mid American Conference, also known as the MAC. Our rivals are the NIU Huskies and the Indiana State Sacramores. Um, I think. I think a sacramore is a type of plant because I heard that word before, but I, th I think it's a plant. I don't know. Uh, let me know down in the comment section below if you if you know what that is. Moving on, um, in 2008, uh, the Cardinals finished the season 12 and 2. So let's see if we can uh, improve on that this year. First things first, we're going to look at the top 25 polls, and at number one, we have the Florida Gators back when they had Tim Tebow starting his senior year. At number two, we have the Oklahoma Sooners coming in with an A-plus overall offense and defense. At number three, we have the Texas Longhorns. At number four, we have the Trojans uh, without Mark Sanchez because in 2009, he entered the draft, and we all know how that, it, how that went with his career, you know, playing with the Jets and all. At number five, we have the Tigers of Louisiana. Thank God Joe Burrow was only 13 at the time. At number six, we have the never losing Crimson Tide. No disrespect to Crimson, Crimson Tide fans. I'm just not a fan of them because they're always winning like the Patriots. Uh, the Buckeyes are number seven. Penn State, are num uh, they're number eight with an A overall offense and defense. Oklahoma State is number nine. At number 10, we have the Virginia Tech Hoagies. Um, to this day, I still don't know what a hoagie is. Uh, I, I don't know what the hell they are. They, it sounds like a, I don't know. It sounds like something you eat. At, <laughs> at number 11, we have the Rebels coming in with a B-plus special teams unit. The Ducks are number 12 in the polls. I'm sure we all can agree that they have the best jerseys in NCAA history. Uh, at number 13, we have the Georgia Bulldogs. And at the time in this game, A.J. Green was only a sophomore. Boise State is number 14, and yes, they do have their famous blue field in this game. At number 15, we have the Cal Golden Bears. Um, I expect them to do uh, pretty much to dominate uh, this year in their offense. Uh, the Tar Heels are number 16 with an, with an A-plus defense. The BYU Cougars are number 17. Uh, I don't believe they'll stay in the top 25 throughout the season. I feel like they'll be one of the teams that will be out uh probably like midway through the season at number 18 we have the georgia tech yellow jackets and their triple option offense um i feel like they have the most confusing playbook i don't know how they able to run plays because i'll be confused just trying to snap the ball and try to give it to the uh running back on the options um <clears throat> at number 19 we have the tcu horn frogs um i don't know what a horn frog is i think they exist um i don't know if they're poisonous either Anyway, uh, FSU is number 20. I don't know why they changed their logo because this logo right here was their best logo. To me, it was their best logo because their logo now looks like something out of high school. Coming in at number 21, we have the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Iowa comes in at 22, and they have the worst team overall in the top 25 due to the fact that they have a B-minus offense and defense. The Mountaineers are number 23. Uh, and Geno Smith, if anyone remembers him, um, he was actually a freshman in this game. At number 24, we have Utah. They have a B rank across the board. And last but not least, we have the Kansas Jayhawks at number 25. Just a heads up, guys. I'm big when it comes to the top 25 polls. I love seeing underdog teams move up in the polls. Uh, the best part, um, as you guys can all agree, are the upsets, which I'm a fan of. And uh, Anyway, um, looking at our uh, team, we are ranked number 89 in the nation with a C overall a C plus offense, a C defense, and a C plus special teams unit. I don't expect us to make it to the national championship right away, but you know, I would say give it, give or take, maybe four to five years. I mean, seasons, and then maybe six. You know, depending on how well we do throughout, uh, how much progress we make throughout every year. So next, we're going to view our conference outlook and where we stand in the MAC. Now, for those who don't know, the MAC is split into two divisions. You have the East and you have the West. And at the end of the season, the leaders of both sides will play in the conference championship to determine who is who is the MAC daddy, if you want to say it like that, of the conference. <laughs> As we take a look, we can see that the Buffalo Bulls are starting at number one in the conference. Number two, we have the Central Michigan Chippewas. Uh, the Temple Owls are number three. The Falcons of Bowling Green are number four. Western Michigan is number five. 
we're number six in the conference. Not a bad spot to be in. You know, um, at number seven, we have the Kent State Golden Flashes. Uh, the Toledo Rockets are number eight. Our rival, the Northern Illinois Huskies, are number nine. Miami University, not Miami, Florida. Miami, Ohio, they are number 10. The Akron Zips are number 11. The Ohio Bobcats are number 12 in the conference. And last, we have the Eastern Michigan Eagles. 13 teams. Man, this is going to be a quite exciting dynasty. Uh, let me know down in the comments below on who you think will win the MAC championship. Pretty much all the teams are even uh, in terms of overall offense and defense, or at least close enough. So, you know, it's anyone's game. Now, guys, we're taking a look at the preseason Heisman watch. And I did select to randomly generate the uh, players' names, kind of so, you know, so these players do not exist. So, anyway, we have number 15, Carlos Anderson, the senior quarterback out of Florida, leading the Heisman. Next, we have number 14, Bill Fuller, the junior redshirt from Oklahoma. At number three, we have number 12, Justin Johnson, the senior redshirt quarterback from Texas. Next, we have number four, Dave Robertson, the junior halfback from Cal. And last, we have number 17, Chris Dixon, the senior redshirt quarterback out of Penn State. Next up, we're looking at the most important part of any dynasty, and that's the players. Look at our quarterbacks. All three have an 84 overall. Um, which is pretty good. So it don't matter if one gets hurt, you know, we always can replace them with another 84 overall. First, we have number 17, Pat Kraft, a senior redshirt quarterback. Um, next, we have number 10, Danny Yates, who's a sophomore. Uh, it's, it's really nice to see young talent um, actually at that high overall, you know, kind of makes a difference in years to come. And last, we have number 14, Travis Kelly, who's a junior. Moving over to our halfbacks, we have number 33, Robert Jones, who's our offensive captain and a, oh, an offensive captain with a 90 overall. <laughs> it is a senior year, so we have to use him to his full potential. Um, hopefully, we're able to get to a ball game this year. Uh, he's also an impact player and on the MAC first team. His backup is number, tw uh, number I almost said 22, his number two, Corey Andrews, with an 82 overall. Moving over to fullbacks, we have the sophomore, number 38, Paul Carter, with a 62 overall. Heading over to our wide receivers, we have number 80, Chad Butler, who's a junior with the 88 overall. Next, we have number 81, Terrence Parker, who's also a junior, also another impact player for our offense with an 87 overall. Alongside Parker, we have number 87, Steve Ferguson, with an 82 overall. We have a yeah, we have a lot of junior wide receivers. So that's a lot. So I mean, next year when they're all seniors, bro, this is gonna be really good for our offense. And last we have the sophomore number eight three, Pierre uh, Colston, who's most likely gonna be our top wide receiver in a couple of years. Yeah, because all the other guys are juniors, so he's gonna have to step up even next year. Um, he has an 82 overall as well. At tight end, we have number 88, Corey Brown, who's a freshman with a 72. Hopefully he's improved. Yeah, hopefully he's improved to an 80 by the end of his college career. I cannot talk today. Next to Brown, we have the senior number 82, Andy McGinty. I think that's how you pronounce it. McGinty, McGinty, with a 68 overall. Looking at our offensive line, we have number 79, Ian Tatum, with a 78 overall. Look at that. Look at that, man. It, it's just crazy, man. Look at that. Another freshman. Hopefully we can do big things. Or right, hopefully he can do big things in our team. You know, being as though he's a freshman. Uh, his backup is number 58, Brian Mills, the senior redshirt with a 74. At right tackle, we have number 66, Derek McGill. Only a sophomore, but he has a 70 overall. Uh, and at last, at right tackle is number 78, Dustin Schifano. I think that's how you pronounce it. Schifano. And he has a 65 overall. <laughs> at left guard, we have number 73, Dan Barrett, the junior redshirt, another player on the MAC first team. He has a 74 overall. At right guard is number 51, Freddie Lundy, who's a freshman coming in with a 68 overall. Number 67, Darren Jones, also has a 68 overall. He's most likely uh, going to start over the freshman. Um, you know, compared to his strength, he has an 88 in strength, while uh, the freshman has 82. 
Last, we have number 74, Jeff Rutledge, the junior left guard with a 65 overall. At center, we have the senior red shirt number 70, Sean Williams, another MAC first team athlete with a 78 overall. Williams backup is the freshman number 52, Mario Clark. He has a 74 overall. Now we move over to the defensive side, and at left end, we have our defensive captain, impact player number 90, Shannon Montoya with a 78 overall. Kind of sucks that it's his senior year, you know, but we're gonna use him to the best of his ability as well. At right end, we have number 85, Cornelius Smith, the junior red shirt with a 70 overall. Next, we have number 91, Fred Leak, the senior red shirt right end with a 65 overall. And last, we have number 92, Cody Davis, the sophomore red shirt left end with a 64. Left 65 overall as well. Take a look at our defensive tackles. We have number 65, Jeremy Gibson, the senior red shirt with a 74 overall. Following Gibson is number 98, Willie Bennett, the junior red shirt with a 70 overall. Next up, we have number 95, Leon Davis, the junior with a 68 overall. Last, we have number 64, Cameron Coleman, um, who's also a junior red shirt, and he's coming in with a 68 overall. Now we get into our outside linebackers. And at uh, left outside linebacker, we have number nine, Ben Merritt. Merritt? Merritt? The senior red shirt with uh, 78 overall. At right outside linebacker, we have number 37, Derek Dean, the sophomore coming in with a 72 overall. Also with a 72 overall is right outside linebacker, number 55, Joe, jo Joe, Joe, yeah, that's a tongue to us, Joe Jones, who's a senior. And last we have number 30, Carlton Goodman, the junior red shirt, left outside linebacker. At middle linebacker, we have the junior number 48, Eric Hills, who I plan to use throughout the season on defense. Uh, I normally uh, pick off a middle linebacker and start a place, but you know, I will be switching players. You know, I'm not going to stick to one player. Next, we have number 42, Joe Reddick who's a senior coming in with a 74. Looking at our secondary, we have number 15, Darius Tooth, Toth, both Toth, Toth, there we go. Toth, the junior red shirt cornerback with an 82 overall. Alongside Darius is Kevin Tate, a junior as well with a 74 overall. Moving on is another 74 overall quarterback. Cornerback, we have the freshman, number 34, Andrew Bouchard. He's going to be sticking around for a while, which is good. And last, we have another freshman. Look, another freshman cornerback. Uh, number eight, Reggie Weldon with a 70 overall. So Weldon and Bouchard, those are the two guys I'm going to look to see who can approve throughout the, uh, their uh, college career. At our free safety, uh, man, we need to work on our defense. Anyway, we have number 25, Adam Ross, the sophomore red shirt with a 65 overall. His backup is number 32, Adam Washington, who's also a sophomore, and he has a 62 overall. Our strong safeties are a little bit better than our free safeties. Um, taking a look, we have number 38, Josh Hodges, who's a senior with a 74 overall. And we also have number 10, Jermaine Hurd who's also a senior, but he has a 70 overall. At kicker, we have number 29, Jonathan Moreau. Strange number for a kicker, they gave him 29, but he's a junior red shirt with the 84 overall. And last, we have number 47, Demarcus Bounds, the sophomore punter with an 82 overall. So that's gonna do it for our team. Um, taking a look, we have six freshmen, 16 sophomores, 21 juniors, and 14 seniors. So we're in a good spot to turn this team into a national championship team. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much up for the challenge. You know, I love to challenge myself and play with these low division. I mean, low, I want to say low division. These, uh, the conference is not as good. They're not well known. So we have three scholarships to give throughout the season. Not a, uh, not a lot, but... We're going to make the best of it. Looking at our team needs, we need a quarterback, a running back, a center, three outside linebackers. That is a tough order. Two middle linebackers and two strong safeties. Ten players overall. I'm most likely pursuing safeties because I have two uh, safeties uh, that are seniors that are leaving, and I need a solid secondary to stop the passing game. I can't allow teams to throw all over us, man. I, that's one thing that bothers me. When you got, we have a strong defensive line, but your secondary is just trash. Next, we're looking at our schedule for the year. And week one, we start our first game on the road against Tennessee Tigers. 
week two we're at home against the spartans it should be a good game excuse me if we play smart on defense week three we're up against army should be a close one week four we're home again against arburn week five we start our first conference play against the toledo rockets week six we play the temple owls in philadelphia week seven we're at home against the falcons of bowling green a lot of bird teams in this conference we got the owls we got falcons we got freaking eagles but anyway <laughs> week eight we're heading to yipishilati Michigan <laughs> to play the eagles uh i butcher yeah i butchered that city uh week nine we're battling the ohio bobcats thank god they're not birds uh we have a bye week in week 10 week 11 should be a tough one as we play our rival the northern illinois huskies it's an away game, which makes it a little bit difficult as well. Week 12, we play the Central Michigan Chippewas. And week 13, our last game of the season, we are on the road one last time to play the Western Michigan Broncos. Not a bad schedule, to be honest. We just have to make sure that we beat our conference matchups, you know. So now we're checking out our coach report card. As you can see, my prestige is pretty low and my job security is about half because, you know, this is my first season as a head coach. Uh, I'm on a three-year contract with the Cardinals, depending on how well I do, the organization can extend my contract, which I plan to stay with Ball State. So on some videos, you'll see that uh, teams are offering me uh, to play with them and the organization, but I'm going to just decline every time. Um, our goals for this year is to have a winning season and receive a bowl bid, which we can do. For those of you who don't know, you need six wins throughout the season to be eligible to play in a bowl game. So... Just half. You just need to win half your games of the season. Just win half, and then you're pretty much good to go. Looking at our coaching strategy, we're using the Cardinals playbook, obviously. We're running with the spread offense. Let's see how that goes this year, because uh, spread offense, eh, it's pretty standard. You know what I'm saying? Not too, not too crazy. Uh, we have a tendency to pass the ball as opposed to running um, on offense, as you can see. We're conservative, so not every play needs to be a big one, which I like, because... You know, I don't, I don't want to try to throw deep passes for touchdown unless we're losing. On defense, we're running with a 3-4, which is three linemen and four linebackers. Kind of help out with blitzing the quarterback. Um, I was going to run with a 4-3, but if we can force the quarterback to make bad throws, that can help out our secondary tremendously because you all know that our safeties are pretty trash. In terms of gameplay settings, we're playing four minutes per quarter because these games can last a while. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not playing long games. We're playing on the Heisman difficulty. The play clock, fatigue, and injuries are on just to make it a little realistic. Um, and home field advantage is on as well. So that is going to do it, guys. Um, next time we meet, we're going against the Tennessee State Tigers to start off this dynasty. Should be an easy game, but the only thing I'm worried about is their defense because their defense is so close to our offensive ranking. But anyways, if you want to see more NCAA on the PSP, Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.